Hi everybody, my name is Alyssa and for my therapeutic craft project I chose macrame. I chose macrame because I am very fond of fiber crafts and I really wanted another one to add to my rep repertoire to be able to teach to others eventually and to do on my own time. Um, for a demonstration I'm going to briefly demonstrate how to do two different types of knots. Uh, both of which I used for my wall hanging that I did for my uh, final project. Uh, the first knot is a square knot, and the second is called a vertical clove hitch knot. They're both very basic macrame knots that, um, when you look up how to do macrame, they're the first two that usually come up. So, there's a few steps involved. Um, mainly three. The first is to cut your yarn, the second is to find an anchor point, and the third is to actually tie the knots. Now depending on the complexity of the knots, there may or may not be several steps involved in the knot tying process itself. So I already cut my, cut my yarn. I cut two pieces. Um, I cut them shorter than you should for a full project, just for demonstration purposes. You want them fairly long because a lot of the length is actually used in the knots. Um, and this is going to be my anchor point. This is what I use to hang clothes on after I take them out of the washer. I really tried to maintain uh, the concept of using things that are around me that everyone might have access to. You can also use a dining chair or a carabiner or anything, just anything that you can pull on because you do need to be able to pull on it a little bit to tie the knots itself. So to anchor it on, you use what's called a lark's head knot that I'm sure everybody uses in their daily life and you don't realize it. So you take one length of yarn, you fold it in half, so you have a looped end and a loose end. You take the loose end and you pull it through the looped end and you pull and it creates this knot that you see here and you can pull on it. It's a really secure knot to use anytime you're going to have to pull on anything. You do that with same thing with the second yarn because for the square knot you need four strands. The square knot you take strand one and strand four separate it put one over two and three you put four over the length of one on this side wrap four around the back of two and three and through the loop that you created with one and you tighten it up and you do the same thing from the opposite direction to finish the knot so four over two and three one over four around the back of two and three through the loop of four and you tighten it up and that right there is a square knot. For demonstration I went ahead and I tied a length of square knots. These are both square knots. This one makes the spiral pattern by just doing it from the same side versus changing directions. And then for the clove hitch knot it's a very simple knot. You literally just take it around the front of any strand that you want to use you take it over the front, around the back, and on top of itself, and you pull it through, and that's it. So, um, that was a brief demonstration of a couple of the knots. I used all of those knots in my final wall hanging. These are all square knots. These are all vertical clove hitch knots. And as you can see, a lot of the length is used up when you tie the knots because this is the strands I was using to tie the knots and these are the loose strands that I didn't use to tie the knots. So my experience of learning how to do macrame was really easy because even though macrame sounds like something from the 70s there's still a very thriving community of people who do fiber crafts and so there's things on Instagram and Pinterest and everything that show you how to do these knots, how-to videos, patterns, everything. So it was really easy. Um, 
it was an easy experience to tie the knots themselves. Um, so overall, the craft was fairly easy. The two main challenging things that I found when doing this craft were actually finding an anchor point for my final project. I found this stick in my yard and what I ended up doing, because I didn't have this length on there yet, I put two hangers, two regular hangers on either side and twist ties. I used twist ties to tie the stick to the hangers and just continued to do my project and then I tied this last string on there to actually be able to hang it up when I was done. Just hang it on a nail. Um, the second most challenging thing was actually the amount of time it took to complete this wall hanging. Uh, I was hoping to be able to do a bunch of different things to show you guys, bracelets, plant hangers, there's all kinds of things you can do with macrame. And this one wall hanging took 12 hours to complete. So that that is something that you will also have to take in mind when doing it with clients is that it does take a long time if you're doing a large project such as a wall hanging. This project is meaningful to me because I really enjoy fiber crafts, as I said earlier, and I really wanted more things to be able to work with clients on that don't make a lot of noise, you can do it anywhere, you can utilize what's around your house and around you in your environment to be able to complete the craft. And um, I love decorating my house with natural things and this is natural product and it all just ties into my decor of being natural and things I make myself. Uh, the type of clients I kept in mind while doing this were anyone who has range of motion issues or gross motor issues because the length of yarn you actually have to use if you're doing a large project such as this one, you actually have to pull it through itself a lot and uh, do this motion. Uh, it also works on fine motor skills and dexterity because you're doing the knots and you're holding them in your fingers. I actually kept my dad in mind while I did this because he has very tight joints in his hands from laboring his whole life. He has been a laborer and this type of project would be meaningful to him because he enjoys tying knots as an Eagle Scout. Uh, he could tie knots such as this. You uh, Paracord, those paracord bracelets are macrame knots. So you can tie nets, you can do anything like that. Um, I also any, kept in mind anyone who has trouble sequencing because not only is the knot tying itself a sequencing task, but the pattern is also a sequence. It is fairly easy to grade up and down. Um, to grade it up and make it more difficult, you could add a social aspect. You could use smaller rope, yarn, or twine. You could give less verbal cues on what the knot should be or how to tie the knot. You can create a larger project such as a wall hanging. You can use more complex knots such as more complex than a square knot. They're, they do exist and some of them are fairly difficult. Um, and to grade it down, uh, you can pretty much do the opposite of all those things. You can use larger rope. You can untie it versus tying it. So that works on the dexterity, but instead of tying it, you're untying it. Um, you could actually utilize a piece of foam such as this with slits cut in it in order to separate the yarn, or this is twine, in order to separate it so that it's more easily visible on what you should be doing. You can give verbal cues. You can use t-shirt rope, which is easier to manage. Um, and you can start it for them. You could start a knot for them so that they're not having, because starting the very beginning of the knot can be difficult. So you can start it for them. Um, other than that, it's a fairly easy project. I had a lot of fun completing it, and I very much look forward to seeing what you guys did as your therapeutic craft project. Thank you.